Hi, how are you? Good, I hope. Well, I'm here today to talk about a very important subject that I think about. Because I've been having contact and learning about different beings, different species of beings, of people, than there are. Or, it's a homo sapiens. High technology inventions or black magic, sorcery, or something else. I wanted to write something about this, but I couldn't. I just could not. And I've been doing so much research. And this book that I want to tell you about is very good. In fact, it's kind of brought me and put my feet back on the ground to an extent. Mostly. I have a problem with getting on the internet because I don't like... I'm cam shy. I don't like to get on the camera. But, I want you to see me when I tell you what I believe. I could be considered crazy, and I would have considered myself crazy if I hadn't been getting the photos and the vids of the UFO that is over every night. So here is the People's Guide to Life After Contact, A.D. After Disclosure by Richard M. Doolin, Bryce Zabel, and foreword by Jim Mars, author of Rule by Secrecy. <clears throat> yes, indeed. They have been <clears throat> very smart and good at putting together a lot of the details of what Americans need to think about. I think about the rest of the world later, but right now I'm more concerned because my kids are here, most of them, and will be eventually. And I'm worried. There's so much corruption going on, and... I think there's more than one explanation for this. So let me tell you about uh, the info on the flap telling you about this book. UFOs are real. They are. UFO secrecy is real. Everyone believes that the people have a right to know the truth, but what will happen when we do? Since the first major UFO sightings of 1947, determined researchers have forced the release of once classified reports prepared by the U.S. government and other nations. These accounts tell a story of contact through the eyes of thousands of professional and military witnesses, all pointing to one conclusion. At least some UFOs appear to be intelligently controlled, physical craft of some kind from some place that isn't here. A.D. After Disclosure is all about what, what might happen after an announcement is made that UFOs are real. Someday soon, possibly this decade, our leaders may admit that the people who have seen UFOs aren't crazy or liars. And I am neither one, in my words. But honest, decent witnesses who have seen something extraordinary. <clears throat> Will disclosure lead to social panic? Undermine religion? Destroy the stock market? Or will it lead to revolutionary new technologies, extended lifespans, and world peace? If other civilizations have sent their own explorers across the universe to visit us, who are they? What do they want? And why would some of our own people have kept the news of their arrival from the rest of us? What will unmasking a truth of this magnitude do to our society, our way of life, our very reality? Yes, I do want to know this. Any such revelation will be a game changer of monumental proportions. Unlike 9-11, when we said everything would change, 
In this case, it really will. It's the Brave New World of AD After Disclosure. And there is a website that you can go to, www.afterdisclosure.com. I'll tell you about the author's description when I get through, but I, I really have to say, um, someone's trying to split us all up. United we stand, divided we fall. And it appears that people have been studying us for a long time. And looking back in my life, I've come so close to death so many times. But yet, in miraculous ways, I was helped to avoid it. And I don't think I did it by myself. And I've always believed in God. So I think some of these people here are what were labeled in old days, angels. And the wicked ones are the ones they label demons because they do have telepathy. And I know of a lot of people that said that they were being talked to in their mind. Yes, they were. It wasn't because they were crazy. It's because they were really hearing these beings. They're more spiritual material than they are our kind of bodies. So, they are quite elusive. And the wicked ones hide. And I believe the ones that were labeled angels have been here helping me. Because otherwise, they would stay hid. But these that are here all the time, they absolutely helped me start learning about them. And I have a long story about how this started, but that's another kettle of fish. And another part of this I wanted to read to you was one of my main concerns that I've been studying. And one part is the military. Well, the financial industry stands down. The military will stand up. There will be a worldwide military alert. Without question, all members of the armed forces will be called to duty. No army will want to be unprepared if disclosure carries with it any repercussions from the others themselves. According to military author and researcher Stephen M. Harding, regardless of what occurs in the public spin zone, the Pentagon and the global military establishments will be working over time. If there is any kind of credible indication that this other intelligence is hostile or might be hostile, the meetings will be straightforward strategy and tactics, har tactics, Harding stated. We'll want to know how far out from the planet we can engage them and where they are. Basic questions. What assets do they have and what assets do we have? It could be a depressing meeting if we know that they have things that can hover then go straight up at 80,000 miles per hour because we have no existing weapon systems that can touch that. Harding imagined that space-based lasers should, would be rushed into orbit in whatever time was available to the military prior to dis disclosure, but warned against counting on them to be useful. These airborne lasers would be visible and thus vulnerable to any UFO spacecraft. He suggested that if humanity did plan to shoot at UFOs, ground-based laser systems as used in Iraq would be the best bet, as they are far more powerful than the current airborne system. And this next one is very important because this book was written and published way before what I've heard was going on now. Law enforcement. Martial law will be declared at various places around the world. Police forces around the world will be on alert and working maximum overtime despite any existing economic downturns. People will need protection from other people, almost certainly more than they will from an alien invader. Looting will be widespread this day even if it is nothing more than an instinctive reaction from feelings of panic. Although every store is fair game under these circumstances, most looters will focus on guns and other weapons, food, generators, and camping supplies. Expect some riots and some shootings. The local police of this nation 
are apt to be blindsided by this news as the citizens they are sworn to protect. No disclosure attempt could be planned successfully and kept quiet if police everywhere have to know about it. What will happen instead is that the Department of Homeland Security will raise the threat level to orange, high, but not to red, severe. This will get everyone ready for something. It will deflect media suspicions to a terrorist threat. But it will be one level less than the ultimate. It will, therefore, avoid creating its own sense of panic and aggressive questions about the cause. Now, about this, uh, I've seen a lot of videos on here that says that uh, they've declared a, a rather martial law here in our land. And they should be aware of this. Because I live in a city where we have a military base. And... What makes me suspicious is that we have some new businesses that make aircraft products, but they do not say exactly what kind of products they make. And if they're making something for a top secret kind of thing, then that's another subject. But it's connected to, to this one. And... The last thing I wanted to read to you from here, besides some of the details of this book that is packed full of food for thought that we all need to think about, and we'll discuss that later, is in their introduction, one paragraph, we end this book with a piece of advice, no fear. This means do not be afraid to express your views regarding the reality of other intelligence interacting with humanity. For the truth is that more people believe this than you realize. Do not fear the secret keepers, for they are people too, who have generally done what they have out of the belief that it was the best. Also, do not fear their power, as they are not infallible, and time is against them. You have your own resources to marshal the truth. Do not fear the others, either, no matter what the truth may be. Whether they be angels, demons, good, bad, or indifferent to our fate, do not fear them. You live well enough, well enough up till now, and you will survive well enough after the great change. Above all, believe in humankind and our ability to face unexpected challenges and the strength and wisdom that reside within us much more than we realize, waiting for the moment to manifest. And believe me, I I felt pretty close to dropping off the edge of sanity into craziness. <clears throat> but I got pictures and videos. Now, the major thing is to search, research, and hunt to make sure that it is a different species of people that have come here or are here. Because there are so many living beings here, including bugs and things like that, that we've never even known of before. And still, still uh, finding out about these things. So don't think there's not some people. I've wondered if we have beings underground, and I got another part of that, too. As well as people who live in our sky, which would be the angels that watch over us, that were labeled that back in history. And <clears throat> some of the contents in here. Chapter 1, The Day Everything Changes. <clears throat> and gives us all the things that they talk about in here. And it's, it's a lot. First reactions, in other words, the gathering storm. What kind of disclosure? <clears throat> Full radical disclosure. Partial control disclosure. False Deceptive disclosure, spin city, a moment in time, the ground shifts, the military, law enforcement, media, and communications, which they have their own issue in this. Religion, government, us and them. Now, <clears throat> what some know now that gets disclosed then. In fact, according to these things, I think everybody should be looking with a new eye on all 
that they are connected with, including religion and other other things <clears throat> that that they are connected with as well as hear about. But if you're in a religion, do you have some people in there that are acting normal? Or are they trying to divide us? Because united we stand, divided we fall. But there seems to be those who are working to keep us divided. And there are other things about that that I'll talk about but later. In chapter 2 is Facts in the Air. The history of contact throughout the ages. It gives you some history. And a Vincenet Air Force Veterans Petition. Chapter 3, Breakaway, How Secrets Created a World Within a World. And he talks about many things of that. Chapter 4 is Endgame, When the Impossible Becomes the Inevitable. Inevitable. Chapter 5, Threat Analysis, Who Goes There and What Do They Want. Chapter 6, Blowback, Collateral Damage and Unintended Consequences. Chapter 7, The New Age of Aquarius. Turn on, tune in, drop out. Chapter 8, Paradigm Shift, our new place in the universe. Chapter 9, Extra Politics Rising, moving from the first contact to informed contact. And cha Chapter 10, Open Letters, Inside and Outside. And my head is so full of info. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready, just about ready to go nuts. Okay, I found a little round stone back in October. And I showed my daughter because I wanted to show my, tell my family about things like this at first. But I found this little thing and I didn't even pay attention to it for a long while. Let me see if I can get it up here where you can see it. It even seems to have a little face on there. In fact, he has many on here. And he feels very heavy when he's cold. When he's warm, he gets lighter. But he moves around in my hand because I was thinking about smashing him one day to see what was in him and what he was made out of. And he started moving around in my hand. Now, one of these days I'll... <clears throat> try to make a video and show you if he's moving. But I took him with me when I took my mom to the doctor one day and sat out in the waiting room to see if he would move around other people since there's other people sitting out there. And he stayed quiet for a very long time until all of a sudden he almost seemed to leap out of my hand. And I had my other hand under there and caught him. But he does move around. He's not moving right now. Maybe he don't want you to see it on around the world. But I wondered where did he come from? We thought maybe he rolled into the driveway by himself anyway. Because maybe uh, these earthquakes here in Oklahoma that's so unusual is open the space for a being like this to come out. Is he a living being? Or is he some kind of device? I think of him kind of a thinking toy because I'm sure thinking about it. So, as far as it goes, for now, I'm thinking. How about you? Have a good one wherever you are. Day or night. Later.